Let's discuss 1992. I remember sitting in my mother's house and I was about 20 years old. I don't remember exactly the month and day. And I remember <clears throat> the phone rang. My mother got the phone. And she came to me and she said to me, there's a girl on the phone for you, Jason. She wants to talk to you. I got up. <clears throat> I did know some females at the time. And I went to answer the phone. At this point, I got into my bedroom, got on the telephone, and there was a very lovely voice on the phone, a female sitting there. Um, <clears throat> and she sounded very sweet, very loving, very kind, and we began to connect right away. <clears throat> Without going into too much details about that phone chat, it's rather personal nature. She did discuss a great deal of spirituality with me at the time, though a lot of these memories aren't um, very, very clear to me. What, <clears throat> what those, <clears throat> what those memories were at the time, what they mean to me, what they are, I won't go into right now. Um, like I said, it's very, very personal. Um, the feeling that I was feeling with her was a deep, I'll say unconditional, at the time I understood this, was a deep, pure love, a flowing wave through my heart that was flowing like a river, just rushed through me and her like this. We were just a continuous loving sensation. Uh, she was a bit, a bit stern with me about things kind of a bit authorita authoritative, because she understood a great deal more than I do about reality. She understood that I was frightened, or that I was sens she sensed a fear in me about, about things. She revealed her origins and what she was, and that she was a hybrid female from the Sassani race. She spoke a great deal about this. Um, she did say to me that we had met before in previous experiences, but that I couldn't remember them at the time. She said that something very serious had happened, and that I had to go with her, or that there would be a point where I would have to leave with her <clears throat> and, 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 and take off with her. Um, she said that she know <clears throat> it, <clears throat> there was a period where I didn't, I didn't believe her. She then described in detail <clears throat> the interior of my room. She then said to me, how do you think I obtained your phone number? And I said, how? She said, I read your mind. I took it straight from your mind, she said. She also said that she was in the custody of the American Intelligence Services at the time that she was in their custody. She didn't explain how she got there. Um, I told her I loved her. She told me that she loved me in return. She said to me, do you realize what I am? And she was crying. And I said, does it matter? And she said, no, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the love that we share between each other. That's all that matters, is the love that we share. And then she said that I was a credit to my race. She said, she said in the physical, I'm a human being. She connected to my soul, and she said that I was a non-human soul. She then joked, she had a sense of humor, and she said... Um, because I was so straight and logical with her at times, and, and I seemed a bit unemotional. Um, she said, Jason, ironically, she said, I'm more human than you are. She said, but they can't see that because they're staring at my body and they see me as being a non-human. She said that if they only knew the truth, our roles would be reversed right now. <laughs> That's what she said. She said... She, she, it was in our conversation, she went on to say that I, she said she was more human than me. She said, ironically, I'm more, she, she goes, because you, you, you're, you're the, uh, she put it, um, what you call grays. She says, you have a gray soul. You're more, you're more them than I am. <clears throat> I may go into further details about that, about that contact and, and what she said in another video. Um, she did say someone was already here in this world at that time, channeling a being, a male, 
Um, I'm believing she was speaking of Bashar. She did speak of the Sassani race. She did say they were living on a Sassani end of the world and that there were hybrids living on the earth in the future with humanity. But their ideology was more of a loving and more of a deeper loving connection with humanity. The ones that lived on a Sassani loved humanity. It was more of a distance in their ideology. It was a bit of a, you know, kind of a distant stance with humanity a bit. Cared about humanity, but they had their own problems to deal with. Uh, but she said the ones in the future on Earth, <clears throat> was, they were a little more closer to the, to the human equation or dealing with humanity in, in a much more deeper loving sense. And the loving feeling I had from her <clears throat> was unbelievable. Um, I felt her feelings, <clears throat> her dreams, her aspirations, everything, I, everything, every detail of her mind, even the sciences and technology, it was all there. Uh, we'll go into video five and what came next. But the phone chat was of a personal nature, and for the moment, I'm going to leave that as, as kind of private. Uh, but we did connect very lovingly in that in that phone chat. It was amazing. Um, for a moment in my life, I'm sitting on the phone with a Sesame girl, and it was one of the most amazing conversations you could ever have with someone. I didn't say I channeled the person in my mind. This was an actual phone chat. I was talking to her as I'm talking to this camera right now. <clears throat> 